Good afternoon and welcome to our online press conference on the action plan on synergies between civil, space and defense industries. The action plan is a deliverable which was indicated already in the new industrial strategy adopted by the Commission in March last year. I am very pleased to welcome here with us in the press room Executive Vice President Margrethe Vestager and Commissioner Thierry Breton. The Executive Vice President and the Commissioner will first present to you the action plan and then we'll turn to your questions. Executive Vice President, please. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, it's good to be in the press room. Uh, as today, we have uh, adopted our first ever action plan on synergies uh, between civil defense and space uh, industries. Uh, the global technology race is accelerating and the point of this action plan is exactly to strengthen Europe's competitive uh, technological edge and support the industrial base. Uh, it covers three different priorities. Uh, first, build new synergies between EU programs and instruments so that disruptive technologies can find a concrete use across civil defense and space uh, industries. Second, enable that space uh, and defense technologies find concrete civil uh, applications. And thirdly, facilitate the use of civil research and innovation into new European defense projects. After working with ejector seats in fighter jets, uh, Swedish mechanical engineer uh, Nils Eva Bolin he designed the three points uh, safety uh, seat belt for a European car company. Inspired by the sort of four point harness that jet pilots uh, were using, well, the three point seat belt was developed and became a global standard in the car industry. It has been saving more than one million lives. More recently, new technology is developed to improve the, the analysis of satellite Earth uh, images are used to conduct early diagnosis of bladder cancer. Those are just a few examples to show that this action plan is about something real. Pulling together the strength of civil, defense and space to boost innovation and to deliver concrete results to societal benefits. It's nothing new. For a long time, we have seen technologies cross bridges between several civil space and defense. We have seen radio waves used in military labs end up in kitchen ovens. And Velcro fasteners initially developed for daily clothes end up in spaceships to hold objects against zero gravity. But this is a new endeavor for the European Union. For the first time, we have substantial EU funding available and related uh, civilian technologies. And this will allow us to build a systematic approach to create synergies across uh, defense, space and civil worlds. So that innovation can reach multiple uses by, def by design and not just by coincidence. And to do this, we start with the technologies. We pull all the three sectors together, space, civil, defense, and ask ourselves, how can we make this technology relevant across these fields? How can we make a smart use of this increased EU funding to make one innovation reach multiple purposes and a wider benefit? To answer this, we have come up with a new methodology we start with identifying critical technologies relevant across defense, space, and civil. For instance, artificial intelligence, smart sensors, quantum technologies, or high-definition Earth observation systems. We will update this list every second year. The second step in our methodology is to develop roadmaps for these critical technologies. The roadmaps, they will list the necessary steps to take a technology from its inception to its wider application. And this includes securing relevant EU funding and finance opportunities targeting a wider socio-economic um, 
context uh, and bringing together all stakeholders, uh, such as government, uh, industry, academia, civil society. Each roadmap will have a specific horizon, uh, milestones, and of course, a final aim. As a third step, we take things to reality by applying these technologies in tangible projects. Today, we launched three flagship projects, one on drone technologies, a new space communication system, and one on uh, space traffic management. Each should lead to improvements, uh, such as better access to high-speed connectivity for everyone in Europe, a more resilient connectivity system in case of large-scale cyber attacks, or new standards to avoid collusion uh, into space. In addition to this new methodology and the projects, this action plan includes additional support actions. Let me just name you a few. In the second, hand, second half of this year, we will equip startups, small and medium-sized uh, companies as well as research and technology organizations with the tools to facilitate their entry into the defense, security, or space markets. For instance, we will develop an, uh, an artificial intelligence tool to help companies navigate the maze of EU funding and find the best instrument to match their needs. We will set up a capability-driven approach in the field of internal security and law enforcement. And this means that we will identify which are the technologies that our authorities, that could be law enforcement, border guards, or custom officials, will need in order to do their job the best possible way. And we will do this in a coordinated manner across Europe. As a result, European industry and innovators will be able to develop technologies that our authorities really need. In doing so, we can reduce uh, strategic dependencies and facilitate compliance with European data protection and ethical standards. Through all these actions, we want to tap into that huge innovation potential that exists throughout our union. We will offer funding opportunities to researchers and to startups that have great ideas, but may not be aware of uh, of their potential application outside of traditional sectors. And that is what cross-fertilization is all about. To conclude, this action plan is a part, an integral part of our broader agenda for Europe. It meets our industrial strategy's objective to increase cross-sector synergies. It also supports our broader ambition to boost job creation and innovation in small and medium-sized companies at a time where we need it and a lot. In fact, just like the Velcro fasteners, many innovations were, cre were created in small uh, labs or boutique shops. By creating new outlets for technologies and connecting companies across sectors, the action plan also contributes to achieving our ambition of our single market. And most importantly, as we face a um, global race for the technological lead, it represents a further step towards our open strategic autonomy. With the action plan, we open up the opportunity for cooperation with partners who are already active in these areas. In fact, against the global economic and security concern, the European Union has pledged to develop a common transatlantic approach to protecting critical technologies and working on technology and trade standards. The transatlantic partnership and cooperation with other like-minded uh, countries can also support our European efforts uh, in this area. Because Europe has what it takes to become a technological leader. The ambition, the talent, the companies, and the funding. This plan brings all those elements uh, together across civil, defense, and space industries. So in the coming years, more groundbreaking European innovation can become through worldwide standards, just like the three-point seatbelt. All of that, of course, only with cooperation, as we have been cooperating in developing this action plan. Please, Thierry, take it from here.